On a night heavy with dark clouds, the venerable church of St. Peter rose imposingly against the stormy sky. Lightning tore through the cloak of night, heralding an impending storm. Under the church's weathered canopy, a figure trembled. It was Miguel, a black-furred dog, whose eyes seemed to reflect the turmoil both of the sky and of his lonely soul. The wind howled, chanting songs of desolation between the temple's columns, when a bolt of lightning struck the church tower with a thunderous roar that shook its foundations. Startled, Miguel shrank further but couldn't help but fix his gaze on the statue of St. Peter, now shrouded in hissing smoke. On that same night, Father John, a middle-aged man with a compassionate gaze, conducted his nightly rounds, a practice of reflection and prayer. Approaching the entrance and noticing the figure huddled under the canopy, his eyes showed immediate understanding. Approaching carefully, he murmured, Poor creature, what brought you here on this turbulent night? Miguel, feeling the kindness emanating from the priest's voice, allowed himself to approach. Father John reached out his hand, and the hesitant dog allowed the contact. I see the heavens have brought you to me as a sign. You shall be called Miguel in honor of the Archangel. How about that? Accepting the name and the gesture of friendship, Miguel wagged his tail slightly. Let's go inside, Miguel. You found a home. Father John led Miguel into the church, unaware of the shadow subtly moving around the damaged statue. Inside the church, as he prepared a place for Miguel, Father John watched the storm outside thoughtfully. There is something more to this night, something hidden in the shadows and the fury of the heavens. But what could it be? Miguel, now safe and fed, fixed his gaze on the door leading to the main nave, feeling a growing restlessness, a need to protect that place and his new human friend from something still unknown. With the storm past, an unsettling calm settled over the city. The sun shone in the sky, but a shadow of mystery continued to envelop the Church of St. Peter. The local community, unaware of the events of the previous night, began to notice peculiarities around the church. During a Sunday morning, as children played around the statue of St. Peter, an exclamation arose, Look! St. Peter's finger is gone! The buzz quickly spread among the faithful, mixing concern and curiosity. Father John, informed of the incident, hurried to examine the statue, with Miguel by his side. He confirmed the disappearance of one of the fingers from the statue's right hand, which left him perplexed and worried. How could this have happened? He questioned himself. Could it be a sign? pondered Mrs. Helena, a devout parishioner with a trembling voice. Seeking to calm the community, Father John gathered everyone around the statue. We must not be overcome by fear. Let us investigate and find a rational explanation. God is with us. The following days were consumed by theories and speculations, but no evidence of human intervention was found. Father John, determined to unravel the mystery, began consulting the church's ancient records. One night, while reviewing documents in the sacristy, Miguel, restless, began to bark and dig at the foot of the statue. Curious, Father John approached and discovered something unexpected, a metallic object partially buried, apparently part of a finger. How did this end up here? He wondered, intrigued. Realizing that the mystery of the statue might have deeper roots, he decided to investigate further, unaware that the truth about the shadows and the strange events would be revealed very soon in a completely unexpected and natural way. As Father John and Miguel proceeded with their investigations into the mysterious disappearance of the statue's finger, reports of an enigmatic shadow wandering around the church began to spread throughout the community. These sightings fueled an atmosphere of mystery and apprehension, with accounts of a shadowy figure appearing during the nights of the new moon. One night, determined to observe the phenomenon for himself, Father John, along with some curious members of the community and loyal Miguel, armed themselves with lanterns and cameras and positioned themselves in the churchyard where the shadow had often been sighted. The new moon dimly illuminated the sky, casting a silvery glow over the old temple. As the night progressed, anticipation grew. Miguel, sensing the tension, remained alert, with his ears perked up and his eyes attentive to any movement. It was then that the shadow emerged, moving with mysterious fluidity among the trees and the church. With pounding hearts, 
The group watched as the shadow glided through the garden, its shape appearing almost human. Father John, holding his breath, followed it with his lantern. And in that moment, the truth was revealed in an unexpected and completely natural way. The lantern light captured the twisted branches of an ancient oak, whose whimsical shapes were the source of the enigmatic shadows. Under the direct light, it became clear how the arrangement of branches and the play of light and shadow created the illusion of a human figure moving. The shadow was nothing more than a natural effect, magnificently orchestrated by the combination of moonlight and the ancient tree. Relief was palpable among those present, and nervous laughter echoed through the garden as the tension dissipated. Father John, relieved but somewhat embarrassed for not considering such a simple explanation, used the moment as a valuable lesson. You see, my friends, he began, gathering the group around the old oak. Often, fear of the unknown can lead us to see monsters where only the wonders of nature exist. We must always seek the light of truth, no matter how mysterious the shadow. Inspired by Father John's words and the unexpected outcome of the adventure, the community decided to illuminate the area around the oak with soft, solar lanterns, turning the place into a gathering spot for new moon nights, where the dancing shadows were now a cause for celebration rather than fear. With the mystery of the shadows resolved, Father John turned his attention to the metallic object found at the foot of the statue. Armed with the truth about the shadows and a new understanding of his parishioners' fears, he was ready to face any challenge confident that he was not alone in his quest for truth. Miguel, always by his side, seemed equally ready to continue his watch, now more vigilant and less fearful of the shadows of the past. On a rainy afternoon, as Father John meticulously examined the scrolls in the sacristy, he came across a reference that had previously gone unnoticed. The document mentioned a church renovation that had occurred centuries ago, specifically in the area where the statue of St. Peter was located. Intrigued, Father John decided to investigate the exact location described in the scrolls. Accompanied by Miguel, who seemed to share his owner's curiosity, Father John explored the base of the statue with new eyes. After hours of meticulous inspection, he discovered an irregularity in the stone floor that seemed to be misaligned with the rest of the pavement. Carefully, he removed the stone, revealing a hidden compartment below. Inside the compartment, wrapped in a time-worn cloth, was a small wooden box. Trembling with anticipation, Father John opened the box to discover several ancient items. Silver coins, a rosary of wooden beads, and surprisingly, a metal finger that fit perfectly into the statue of St. Peter. Alongside the objects, there was a rolled and sealed scroll. Father John carefully opened it and read the faded words, written by an ancient priest of the church. The text revealed that the piece had been intentionally removed as part of a protection ritual during a period of great plague, believing that the removal of a part of the statue would guard the church and its worshippers from greater harm. With the story revealed, Father John felt a mixture of relief and admiration for the faith and actions of those who came before him. He decided it was time to restore the statue to its original form not only as a gesture of historical preservation, but also to honor the memory and beliefs of those who had served that parish through the centuries. With the community gathered, Father John shared the discovery and the story of the statue's finger. The reaction was one of fascination and respect for the church's history, which deepened even further. The restoration of the statue was planned as a community event, involving everyone in the process, reinforcing the community's connection to its faith and its history. Miguel, observing everything alongside Father John, seemed to understand the importance of the moment. Together they not only had solved a mystery but also had strengthened the bonds of their community, teaching everyone a valuable lesson about the importance of perseverance, faith, and respect for past traditions. As the church prepared for the restoration event, Father John reflected on the strange paths that had led him to this discovery. Every step Every shadow and every stone seemed predestined to reveal a larger story, one that was ready to be told to the new generation. That night, the Church of St. Peter was immersed in an atmosphere of intense devotion. The local community had gathered for a special vigil, dedicated to prayer and reflection. Father John had organized the event as a way to strengthen the parish's faith in the face of recent mysteries and challenges. 
Candles flickered gently along the nave, casting dancing shadows that moved to the rhythm of whispered prayers. As parishioners recited rosaries and sang hymns, the serenity of the moment was abruptly interrupted. A sudden tremor shook the ground, as brief as it was intense, causing the lanterns to sway and the stained glass windows to vibrate with a subtle tinkling, as if the very air was fracturing around them. Father John, standing before the altar, held the missal firmly as he looked worriedly at the congregation. Before he could reassure the faithful, a thunderous sound pierced the silence that followed the tremor. All eyes turned in horror to the statue of St. Peter, from which a stone arm had detached and fallen forcefully to the ground, shattering into fragments that scattered like omens of a dark portent. The shock was palpable, and murmurs of fear and speculation quickly spread among those present. A sign of curse, someone whispered. A divine warning, exclaimed another, as uncertainty and dread began to intertwine with the smoke of the candles. Father John raised his hands, calling for calm. Brothers and sisters, please, let us keep our faith strong. This is a time for us to pray even more fervently and seek divine protection. We must not succumb to fear. Gathering his strength and commanding everyone's attention, he proceeded with the Mass, turning the event into a collective plea for peace and understanding. Lord, guide us in our confusion and strengthen our faith. May this event unite us even more as a community and teach us to face adversity with courage and hope, he prayed, as the congregation echoed his words in reverent murmurs. Despite the scare, the vigil continued, with the community seeking comfort in each other's words and presence. The Mass became not only an act of faith, but also a testament to the resilience of the community in the face of the unexpected. Meanwhile, Miguel, the faithful dog who had been adopted by the church, circled restlessly around the accident site. His attention seemed focused on the debris, as if he could perceive something beyond the obvious. Father John observed the dog's behavior, pondering what else might be hidden beneath the signs so dramatically revealed on that vigil night. Intrigued and concerned, he decided that after the Mass, it would be essential to examine the statue and the impact site more closely, hoping that there were no more unpleasant surprises waiting to be discovered. In the days following the tremor and the incident at the vigil, the Church of St. Peter became the center of many conversations and concerns within the community. Father John, aware of the need to handle the situation with transparency and care, called a meeting with the most influential members of the parish to discuss the next steps. The meeting took place in the church itself, next to the damaged statue. The priest began by explaining the importance of not jumping to hasty conclusions and considering all possibilities for what had occurred. We must remember that our faith is tested in adversity. This may be a time for us to reflect on our devotion and our resilience as a community, he said, seeking to calm the spirits. After the meeting, a team composed of some engineers and architects from the community was formed to inspect the structural integrity of the church. They began their analysis with the statue, examining every piece of the fallen arm and the structure itself where the statue was fixed. Miguel, always present, watched every move, occasionally sniffing at the debris. During the inspection, one of the engineers called Father John to look at something concerning. Father, see here. This is not just superficial damage. There are signs of internal erosion in the foundations near the base of the statue. The tremor may have exacerbated an existing condition, explained the engineer, pointing to small cracks forming around the base. This discovery brought a new urgency to the situation. Father John, understanding the gravity of the problem, decided that it was necessary to convene a meeting with the entire parish to discuss the findings and plan a collective response. This is our church, a symbol of our faith and community. We must unite to ensure its safety and integrity, he stated during the call. The community meeting was scheduled for the end of that week, allowing time for all church members to be informed and participate. Meanwhile, Father John and some volunteers began organizing documents and historical records of the church, seeking any previous references to structural issues that could help understand the extent of the current damage. As the week progressed, Tension in the community was palpable, but there was also a growing sense of unity and purpose. People began offering assistance in various forms, from financial aid to volunteer work for minor repairs. 
Miguel, meanwhile, seemed particularly fixated on the area around the base of the statue. His restless behavior led Father John to suspect that there might be more to discover. Encouraged by the dog's instinct, he decided to conduct a more detailed inspection of that specific area before the community meeting, hoping to find answers that could help alleviate the concerns of his parishioners and ensure the safety of his beloved church. During a new meeting at the church, Miguel, who had been relatively calm for most of the time, suddenly began to act restless. Father John, knowing the dog's behavior well, realized that there might be more to uncover. Intrigued, he followed Miguel to the back of the church, where the dog began to dig frantically in another spot. Curious, Father John helped to clear away the dirt, uncovering another compromised area in the foundation, previously hidden by dense bushes. This new discovery reinforced the urgency of repairs and the need for a more comprehensive investigation of the church's structural integrity. With these new challenges ahead, the community of St. Peter found themselves united as never before, ready to face adversity with faith and collaboration. The vigil that night not only strengthened their faith, but also showed that together they could overcome any obstacle. Thank <laughs> you.